Hey guys, in this video, we will be focusing on one of the important sequence or workflow of the framework, which is the initialization or the init. So we'll start with opening our main SAML file. And then here is the init sequence. So we'll go ahead, double click inside that sequence. And here, locate the activity if first run read config file we need to go inside that sequence so double click again inside and locate the invoke kill all process workflow so in here we need to add a new sequence so go ahead go to activities panel search for the sequence okay here so once you get that just drag that below the invoke kill all process so it's much better if we can rename this sequence this should be um what name can we assign here let's say read transaction because what will it basically do is to read all the data all the calculate client security hash data from the work item subsystem one application so once you rename that uh, we can expand this sequence by double click inside and then here we need to invoke four of the workflow that we created on the uh, previous video so we'll start with invoking the system one login so go ahead go to your project again the system one login should be under your system one folder so locate that and drag that to our sequence and before we proceed on adding the next um workflows make sure to bind all the argument required so for this one it should be okay it should be config in here and system one url make sure to add to string else you will have an error and this one will be system one oops credential and to string so hit okay once we completed that and the next workflow that we need to invoke is the navigate to work item. So again, that's under the system one folder. Just drag that in here. And this does not have any arguments. So we, sh we should be good on that. Next one is the extract data table. Or, okay. And we have here one argument. So the out data, we need to assign that to our transaction data. There you go. And hit OK. And the last workflow that we need to invoke is the system one that close or system one underscore close. Just drag that in here. And again, this one does not require any argument. And we need to have a one variable that will contain all the calculate and security hash data. So to do that, go to your variable panel. Now we need to add one variable. Let's name it a uh, work item list. I'll, I'll just use WI list and the variable types of this uh, variable should be a, an array of data row. So here select for the array of and then select data row so if you haven't have if you don't have that available just click rows for types and then here search for data row and you should be that double click that hit okay and should be good but this is important guys make sure that uh, you're paying attention in here as you can see by default the scope of the variable that i created is only read transaction or under read transaction meaning that um, this variable is only accessible within the sequence within the read transaction sequence that we created so outside that sequence it's no longer accessible by the other workflow so to make it accessible to the overall workflow, we need to modify its scope to the general business process. So as you can uh, as you can notice in here, all of our main variables are under that same type of scope. So make sure to do that. And then we need to add an activity. 
So that should be an assign activity. So go back to activities panel, search for the assign, should be hit. And then drag it in between extract data table and system one, close, okay? So we need to assign all the calculate client security hash data to the WI list variable by filtering the extracted data table. So to do that, uh, let's go to these properties and expand the value box or text field. So to filter the transaction data, it should be like this, that, <coughs> excuse me, select, type should be WI5. That's based on the guideline, if you will check. And status should be equals to open. So take note of the, uh, what do you call the special characters that I'm using, the double quote, single quote. Most of my previous uh, comment on my previous video are having trouble in here. So make sure to follow it correctly. But, well, actually, if you made any mistake in here, you should receive an error. But if it did not uh, if it was not able to validate your error then you might get confused on where did you what did you made wrong so once you have that just hit this okay button and you should be good we should be good actually on this um sequence so later once we are testing the uh the process you will see the importance of the init so we need to have it configured before we proceed on the next workflow. As, uh, as you can notice, we, I am following how it was designed on the framework. So you will not get confused on how things get done. Okay, so I think that's all for this video or for this one. And we'll see you again on the next one.